Changes are afoot and Pwn to Own is next week. It's Patch Tuesday. Let's see what got fixed and what didn't. Hello, everyone. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our Chief Patch Wrangler. It is time for the March Patch Report. So we've got a large release from Adobe, sort of, and a smaller release from Microsoft. Some really interesting things to talk about. So let's go ahead and get straight to it. So for Adobe, we've got six patches addressing 56 vulnerabilities in Experience Manager, Premiere Pro, Cold Fusion, Bridge, Lighthouse, Lightroom, Animate, whatever they call those things these days. Really a small release, except for the Experience Manager, which has a bunch of cross-site scripting bugs, which is kind of interesting to see all those cross-site scripting bugs still being fixed. Uh, more interesting me to this, is, oh, also there's a Cold Fusion bug here. If you're still running Cold Fusion, consider upgrading to something a little bit more uh, modern. Just putting that out there. Um, what's interesting here is what's not fixed. So there's not a reader patch. Pwn to Own is next week. Adobe Reader is a target. So if you are targeting Reader at Pwn to Own, you did not patch out. So congratulations. Uh, also, Adobe has made the decision to stop tweeting when their uh, pack patches go live, which I find very confusing. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, we're dumping this platform. It's another thing to say we're taking away communications that a lot of people rely on. So hopefully they reverse that. Uh, please tweet them or email them and let them know your displeasure if you care. None of these bugs are publicly known or under active attack at uh, the time of release. Moving on to Microsoft, we've got 59 new patches from Microsoft in the standard components, uh, Windows, Office, Azure, .NET, SQL Server. Again, big one there. Uh, Hyper-V, that's a, a, an interesting one. Now, none of these are listed as publicly known or under active exploit. However, comma, last month, Microsoft, after the initial release came out, said, oh, this bug actually is under active attack. And then they retracted that and said, oh, no, this other one is actually under active attack. And then they came out and they said, oh, actually, this other one is also now under active attack. So as of now, nothing is under active attack. But who knows what Microsoft will say in the future? So let's uh, move on to some of the bigger ones. Hyper-V RCE. This is a really cool one. Um, this is one that I would really have liked to see next week at Pwn to Own, where we're offering $250,000 for just such an exploit. Uh, it's one of only two critical bugs this month, and uh, this one is a guest to host escape. So as a guest operating system, you can get code execution on the underlying hypervisor, which is really cool. Uh, so there is that. Uh, next up is Exchange Server. Exchange. I, 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 yeah, so I don't know. Um, Exchange. This is a classic DLL loading bug. Uh, again, Exchange was one of the ones last month that it came out afterwards was actually under active attack. So is this one under active attack? Well, as of now, we have nothing indicating that it is. But, you know, give it a few minutes and uh, see what happens. Uh, next up, we've got a CVSS 9.8, which is awesome. I know I'm weird when I say it's an awesome 9.8, but this is Open Management Infrastructure, OMI, RCE. So essentially, a remote unauthenticated attacker, if you can connect to an OMI instance on the internet, you can be, send a specially crafted request and get code execution. Now, Microsoft does say this is exploitation less likely, which is their exploit index rating for it. However, it's a simple use after free. Uh, and it's a very juicy target. So I would, this is on TCP port 5986 by default. So I expect to see a lot of scanning on that port in the very near future. Who knows? Uh, next up, we've got uh, this really cool Kubernetes uh, bug that uh, allows you to essentially take over confidential guests and containers. Um, so you could steal credentials and affect other resources pretty nifty. Uh, and so if you're using Azure Kubernetes, definitely take a look at that. And um, patching won't be straightforward on this. And this is where I, why I called it out. So you have to uh, ensure that you're running the latest version of the AZ conform and Kata image, Kata. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. Uh, the bulletin contains additional resources. So definitely, if you're running Azure Kubernetes, review the bulletin, make sure that you get updated appropriately and uh, don't patch. And when people say, just patch, that's when you say, how? I can't do it when it's like this. Speaking of that, if you take a look at the uh, 
the rest of the table here, you will see that little cross indicates when there are other things like the Azure SDK spoofing vulnerability. You've got to do some other things like uh, to other than just patch. But uh, again, 59 new CVEs this month, total of 64 altogether. There's a Intel one here uh, that's external and then some Chromium ones that are external. And I'm just gonna hit, hit it right now because that's not a mistake on my part where it says unknown there for the uh, what it what the severity is because Microsoft released this bulletin, this edge for Android spoofing vulnerability back on March 7th. Well, they published it, but they didn't release a patch. So it's still unpatched even though it's published and I'm as confused as you are. I, I really don't know what's going on with this one. I don't know why they would publish it uh, when an update is not available, but they say just wait for an update. So I guess if you're using Edge for Android, um, maybe consider not until it gets patched. So yeah, there you go. Uh, only one other critical rated bug and that's a denial of service in Hyper-V. Nothing uh, super interesting there. Uh, SQL bugs, again, last month we had SQL bugs all over the place. Same with this month. Uh, but again, you would have to connect to a malicious SQL database and, and query it. Probably not gonna happen. Um, there are a few other RCE bugs here that's a little bit different, but nothing super exciting. Uh, DLL loading bug, again, for Windows OLE. Uh, SharePoint requires user interaction, so nothing cool there. Hey, there's a bug for Skype for consumer. Remember Skype? Yeah, it used to be a verb too. Um, and again, can't just patch this one. You have to download a whole new version of Skype and it looks like you have to do it manually because there's not an update path listed. So that's uh, pretty interesting. And then there are two RCEs that I want to call out specifically because they require physical access. So it's unusual for bugs that require physical access to actually get patched. So, hey, I will give Microsoft kudos for this. So good job on Microsoft but they both rely on somebody plugging in something into a USB port. There's USB over SCSI, which I never knew was a thing. I remember SCSI from way back in the day. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's pretty cool. Uh, speaking of rarities, there's a tampering bug that got patched. Uh, what is it tampering with? We don't know. Microsoft doesn't actually say that, but the, the way it's crafted, the way it's worded, it looks like uh, you're tampering with file data on a system. Um, Probably not that exciting. Uh, there are a bunch of EOPs for this month. Most of them just lead to system. There is one that leads to the very similar, yet very different NT Authority network service privilege. Um, and there's also one here that's really interesting. There's a, a bug in the Authenticator app that's really that sounds really bad, but requires a significant level of social engineering because you would have to close and reopen the app. Uh, but if you can actually exploit this, uh, you could then 2FA. I mean, you could get the two-factor authentication. So yeah, that, that's interesting there too. There are three security feature bypasses in this month's release. And of course, the most impactful is going to be Defender. Uh, an attacker who exploits this would be able to turn off Defender and you wouldn't be able to turn it back on. Good news is you probably have already been updated. The bad news is the Defender updates itself all the time. The bad news is if that you're in an isolated environment, or if you are uh, have Defender disabled, you'll likely have to go in and manually verify the Defender version. Um, it's something you really need to do. There, oh, speaking of rarities, this is a really cool one. So the Hypervisor Protected Code Integrity feature, HVCI, prevents certain areas of memory from being marked as executable. Um, this bug bypasses that and, and allows you to, to execute in places in memory that you shouldn't. However, what makes it really cool is this is an admin level permissions needed to actually get the exploit working. So normally Microsoft says, oh, you have to start as admin. They don't care. This is cool. They actually fixed this one. Uh, and, and I agree with the decision that, you know, the code integrity checks are relevant enough that you actually need to have that fixed, but it starts as an admin and then you would go and then execute code in the kernel where you shouldn't. Uh, some info disclosure bugs, nothing very exciting, and a couple spoofing bugs, um, nothing very exciting there. There is a new advisory this month that I wanted to point out. We don't get advisories very often. This one deprecates the Oracle libraries that are found in Exchange, which is fantastic news. As someone who has patched that many, many times myself, uh, it just means that Oracle is not going to O'Day Microsoft Exchange every time that they update their libraries. Again, this is a very welcome change. And I hope you all don't hear that truck that's rolling by because it's quite loud here. 
anyway, that is what I have for this month. And I just want to remind everyone that Pwn to Own is next week. Pwn to Own Vancouver, the granddaddy of Pwn to Own events. I certainly am looking forward to it. Um, we saw a lot of stuff get patched. Hopefully, if you're participating, your bugs did not get patched out. Like I said, no reader bugs. So definitely that did not get patched out. But until then, uh, I hope to see you there. And if you are at Kansek West, please come down. We are in the Orca and Finback rooms. And if not, I will see you back here on April 9th, which is the next update Tuesday uh, of the year. And uh, until then, uh, everyone stay safe. And uh, may all your reboots be smooth and clean. <laughs>